this weekly webinar series. Uh, thanks for those who have come back again this week. Uh, I'm Teresa Rodriguez. I'm the president of Baytran, and I'm here with our chairman, Carl Joyner. Uh, we are focused this week on the coastal spine, uh, which if you're a resident of the area, uh, Brazoria County, Galveston County, Harris County, you probably are familiar with the project. Uh, but uh, we're going to catch up and find out where we are today uh, and how the, pro the project has evolved. Um, with us are our special guests, Colonel Lynn Waterworth from Texas A&M Galveston. Uh, we have Senator Larry Taylor from District 11, and then Mayor Michelle Bechtel from Morgan's Point. So we'll welcome you all. And uh, Carl, if you want to take just a minute to uh, welcome everybody. Yeah, so um, welcome everyone that's joined us today and uh, welcome our uh, panelists today. Uh, the Coastal Spine is one of our top three projects for Bay Tran. It's uh, up there with the widening of the ship channel and uh, uh, the uh, Grand Parkway, completing the Grand Parkway in the Houston area. So uh, I know you guys are heavily involved in this and we appreciate the effort very much. Uh, it's been, what, uh, 12 years, almost 13 years since Hurricane Ike and uh, sure would be nice if we could start looking forward to a gold of when the coastal spine will be completed. So. Anyway, Teresa, I'll turn it back to you. Sure. Uh, last week we talked about the Grand Parkway and we talked about the role of the Grand Parkway in storm evacuations. So today's piece, it's another piece of the puzzle uh, for how we, how we react to storms, how we prepare for storms. And, you know, I, I, I think, I mean, obviously all, all of us on the panel are supportive of this. Um, but I think there's been some evolution of the project based on community engagement and, uh, and hopefully the community understands that this uh, project is about protecting our assets, protecting the community, uh, and protecting industry. Um, so I wanted to turn it over to Lynn, um, Colonel Waterworth, um, if you would give us an idea of the evolution of the project since conception and uh, where we are today and next steps. Sure, absolutely. Uh, like Teresa said, I'm Lynn Waterworth. Uh, she dressed me as Colonel because that, that's what I did a long time ago. And uh, when I first showed up to Galveston in about 2001, and at that point we were uh, involved with the deepening of the ship channel back then, and we just finished the 45 foot project. So uh, it's good that we're getting back to fix the uh, deepening and widening the, uh, the current channel. We need, need it being the busiest port in the United States and uh, surpassing Rotterdam. So I'm, uh, we should push everything we can to get a uh, wider, safer channel. But I go back, uh, started, uh, I'll go back to uh, right after Ike and uh, Dr. Merrill in November of 2008 started talking about the Ike Dyke. Uh, Ike was an easy name because we just got hit by a hurricane, but he started talking about it in November of 2008 and he thought there was a sense of urgency and uh, through research, his 40 years of experience and research uh, across the world, he came up with the Ike Dyke, uh, a coastal spine along uh, our coastline with gates across Bolivar Roads. Well, 2008, everybody thought it was crazy. And uh, there were articles about that he was crazy and it never worked and it cost too much money. Uh, and ever since then, the risk to our area has just increased. Uh, the petrochemical industry has exploded. The number of ships exploded with the Panama Canal, the number of people coming into our region. But it was until from 2008 to 2014, we were just starting to build some mass, just starting to get the idea developed, starting to get uh, Senator Taylor was starting to get involved in pushing it. Uh, uh, George P. Bush was getting involved in pushing it. And we started to be able to get to a study. Now I wanna focus part of this conversation into the core study and where we are in the core study because what's transpired to this date is that uh, the Corps got involved. Uh, they created a $20 million project with GLO as the sponsor, but it was a, this study was the entire Texas coastline uh, from Louisiana to Brownsville. And some people get confused about what we were interested in, which is the Galveston complex, but they identified the problem. We have a large amount of resources and assets 
on the Texas coastline. It's susceptible hurricanes that uh, impact us, uh, uh, large hurricanes, three fours, uh, every 14 years or 14 years or so. So that was the problem. And then they started to try to identify and formulate all the possible feasible solutions uh, to that particular problem of protecting the petrochemical industry, protecting 6.5 million people and growing. And throughout their feasibility studies where they tried to determine all the possible feasible answers, they came up with the concept of a coastal spine as the most feasible. Uh, and if you're in the core process, uh, project that had the best benefit to the cost that was going to cost it. So we're in that part of the study right now and uh, in the study phase what has to happen, the end of the study phase, they will go through the study process uh, and submit uh, a report to the chief of engineers. And the chief of engineers will sign that report and it'll go to Congress. So the last page, part of that is we're looking for a report to go from the chief of engineers to Congress. Now, from this point until about April, March of next year, the Corps is in the process of finishing up their report. They will have a series of public meetings where we'll get to see it again. And uh, then they'll take all those comments and integrate them in the report that goes forward. Now, Dr. Merrill and uh, our associates at uh, UT Delft and our associates here in the United States have looked at the study and we've made several comments. Uh, right now, we think there's just going to be a, a large sand dune along the beach that's not fortified. We think it needs to have some sort of clay lining in the middle. Uh, St. Louis Pass, we think that needs to be closed, which looks like that's not going to happen. And uh, we had some concerns about the, the ring levy around Galveston. Now, I don't know what the final report's going to look like, but we've made those comments to the Corps, and uh, Dr. Merrill's even written editorials about those things. Uh, but we're in that process. Now, where I wanted to focus my discussion is that we've gone through a very long process to get to the end of the study phase. And this is where it's going to take the community. It's going to take, uh, you know, under the leadership of uh, Senator Taylor and Mayor Bechtel, is that the transition out of the study phase into uh, a chief's report then goes to Congress two specific phases that has to happen in that phase. We have to get authorization and then we have to get appropriations. Now, I'll leave a lot of this to Mayor Bechtel, but that just gets us started out of the study phase. And if we can get con congressional support in authorization and appropriations, then the Corps can get into design. That's where you're gonna have refinements of cost, you're gonna get refinements of design, uh, things may change a little bit inside that complex, but it's now a federal project to move that forward. But there's a lot of heavy lifting that needs to happen as a community to make any federal project happen. And that is to make sure that the, our elected officials in Washington and D.C. understands that this is a national asset that we're sitting on, the Galveston Bay Complex, uh, Galveston, uh, Texas City, uh, the Exxon refineries, you know, 150 plus businesses, the largest petrochemical complex, so that we can fight for appropriations. And right now it's, it looks like on a normal way, appropriations on a yearly basis. And that's if we go under the federal process. So right now we sort of need to cluster together to get ready to push the program either in a federal process or uh, outside the federal process and even I'm focusing on the federal process because that's what I know, uh, but uh, even in the federal process, there will be some form of cost sharing that has to transpire. A lot of these projects are split 50-50 between the federal government uh, and the locals, whoever the locals we define to be, and uh, sometimes we'll even ask for additional parts of the project to be different, and that will be an extra cost to us. But right now we need to see the report and then figure out how to come up with cost sharing because that's gonna be, have to be answered before the report goes to Congress. So we're at the beginning of this long federal process. The estimated project schedule you know, goes from the study, we're at the end of the study process. 
We have to go into design to figure out what the actual costs are, what it finally going to look like. We have to build it. Then we have to maintain it. And we have to do all of that in hopes we don't get hit by another Cat 4, Cat 5 hurricane. And that's the trick. Can we do it fast enough to protect 6.5 million people and 20% uh, of the GDP of Texas right here on the Houston Galveston Ship Channel? But the key part now is to coalesce the community and figure out uh, how to move the project forward, one with cost sharing, and the other part is to have a clear presence and make sure that our elected members in Washington, D.C. understand that this is a national asset. So, Teresa, you asked for about 10 minutes. I know we went over a little bit, but I think those are the key point. And I'll, I'll just uh, pass this over to Mayor Bechtel because he's been really working hard <laughs> to talk about uh, sponsorships and how to alternate payment methods and what the political climate is. So, Teresa, if you don't mind, I'll turn this over to the mayor. To the mayor. That's right. Thank you, Mayor. Did we want to put Larry Taylor in at this point, Teresa, or? Well, I, um, we, we can go ahead with you, Mayor. Uh, we'll talk, we'll turn it from federal discussion to state uh, once we bring up uh, Senator Taylor. But uh, yes, yeah, so feel free, Mayor. Well, but Senator Taylor outranks me. I hate to step on Larry. <laughs> Never stepping on Larry. Never yeah, stepping but, on Senator Taylor. But you got to understand, we're waiting for Larry to tell us how to pay for it, okay? Oh, okay. Well, I was going to tell Larry. Yeah. <laughs> All right, a little bit. Check. A little bit on the timing. Uh, the latest I've gotten is the uh, GLO and the core are expecting a October 9th public rollout. Uh, and then going into a 45 day comment period. Uh, so we coming kind of close probably prior to that, our guys, uh, will probably get a chance to visit with, uh, uh, GLO and, and the use, use such and, and get a further update sometime, uh, next month in September, I would imagine. But right now what I'm hearing is, is a public rollout date of about October 9th with a public comment period after that. Uh, the final report on uh, the GLO USAT study was due originally May of 2021. It may be a little sooner, maybe as uh, er, in April of uh, 2021, I'm hearing now, but uh, and then, of course, like uh, Len said, then we got to go for a chief's report and then try to get it uh, in the word of bill. So basically, we've been operating under the, uh, the core engineer's normal process, let's call it. Uh, but there's some other things that have been going on. Uh, on the what we call the bookends uh, on the east side, Orange and Jefferson did get funding in the Word of uh, 2018 uh, bill for their uh, hurricane work over there. It was a $4, 000, $4 billion, excuse me. Uh, and from what I'm hearing is Jefferson County is moving along and proceeding. Uh, and maybe Senator Taylor can give us an update on the Orange County side of the equation. I've heard uh, several things and they, they're conflicting. So that's a good question we need to ask Larry, what's happening over uh, on that side. But uh, they were in line before us with the study dollars because of the Corps budget at the time. And they had a, uh, had already received a uh, chief's report, and that's why they're basically ahead of the game. What concerned us was that we had to make sure that uh, the federal government could see that the state of Texas could perform on the local matching funds on that $4 billion uh, coming out of Washington, because if they couldn't perform, that would affect us in the long run on the Galveston Bay portion of it, I think. Uh, so 
we were real worried about that, and I hope everything is rolling along. What we've been looking at, however, uh, is alternative funding. Because what I'm noticing is we're proceeding on ours with a final report on the study in, say, April or May of 2021. Uh, but at the same time, there's a number of other coastal surge uh, projects, uh, coastal barrier projects uh, around the country. New York, New Jersey, uh, Boston out of harbor, Charleston uh, surge barrier, and now Miami-Dade surge protection plans are all going to be coming uh, finalizing the studies, let's say, at about the same time in 2021. Uh, also, with all the things going on with COVID in the uh, uh, affecting the federal budget in various ways that they're printing money right now, uh, I see there's going to be a lot of competition for federal dollars when basically we're, we're knocking on the door up there with, uh, with our plan also. So we gotta, we gotta really start thinking outside of the box on the alternative funding plan. If indeed we do end up with federal dollars, we still gotta come up with matching funds on uh, for the local side of it, up to th say 35% is a normal 65-35 uh, breakdown, uh, which is gonna be pretty substantial. Uh, We've come across something that's fairly new. It's called, uh, let me get my note here, but basically resilience bonds. And I think that has a lot of potential. And basically what you, what you do there is, you, it, it, first of all, a, a resilience bond is it's a form of a catastrophe bond. Uh, but it's different in that you link infrastructure or uh, the, the construction of the barrier, in this case, uh, to your insurance risk, and you use that risk reduction after the structure is built as a, and let's just, for simplification, let's call it uh, insurance or resilience rebate that by lowering the risk, you're gonna lower the cost of, of your uh, uh, insurance and you use that money to build the infrastructure. That's sort of how it works in very, very general. Uh, there's an outfit that we ran across that came up with this concept in the financial market there out of California. Uh, and we have, uh, we've met them several times. We brought them to Houston. We brought them over to Austin and visited with Senator Taylor and uh, uh, over in Austin last year. And uh, we got a meeting lined up with them on the 18th next week, in fact, with uh, uh, Dave Martin from uh, Mayor Pro Tem of Houston. Uh, and we're gonna be visiting with them. And we want to do a proof of concept study. Basically, we want to show that this has never been done on the scale we're talking about. So what we want to do is get everybody together and, and show how it can be done, sort of come up with a, a cookbook, do this, do this, do this. And, uh, so I'm going out to the local cities right now. I've approached, uh, eight cities in Harris County, and then we sent a letter also to another half dozen uh, cities on the Galveston side that I'm I'm fairly close to, and we're trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars to do this study. And the plan is to get it kicked off as soon as we can, so that when we do come out in April or May with the final, or the Corps comes out with their final report in April or May, we're ready to hit the ground running with proving how, you know, we're gonna spend the 10 months between now and then showing how it can be done. 
we can either use it for the matching funds or indeed if we don't get federal dollars, maybe we can do the, the critical part of the infrastructure, infrastructure uh, funding it on just with Texas carrying the ball. I'm sort of rambling around, but it's, it's we got to show how, how to do it. Uh, Larry, you want to jump in at any time and go from there? Or be, before that, I'll, I will say we have, uh, the city of Houston has made a uh, contribution to my $100,000 study. Uh, the city of Morgan's Point, Taylor Lake Village, and Nassau Bay. Uh, so we're on a roll. We have uh, city of Laporte and Deer Park. I think I'm going to be talking to their city councils next week. And uh, I'm waiting for several of the other people to respond, but I, I'm pretty confident we're going to have the funds here in, uh, uh, say, by the end of the month, I'm shooting for, for the study. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, Senator Taylor, you know, we've, we've heard kind of the federal uh, action that we're working toward. Uh, what about from the state side? Can you talk a little bit about previous legislation that you've authored or supported and where we're going this legislative session? Well, sure. And thank you, Teresa. Um, this is obviously a huge project for this area. Ever since we first heard about the opportunity to be able to protect this, and we've always just lived here and assumed it is what it is. Um, but when we came up with the idea of the, the Ike Dyke, being able to put a gate across there and actually going and seeing it in, Ho in Holland, having the opportunity to, to you know, we had this, humongous asset that's basically just sitting there wide open, just waiting for the, a bad event to happen. And so this has been a very important project to work on. Uh, this did, we're coming up on 12 years. And of course we used the benchmark of looking at New Orleans after Katrina and they got their whole project done in four years. So we're a little frustrated uh, that we're still doing our study at this point, but uh, we've got to go through what we've got to go through to get it done. And we've, we've been working on this uh, as of last session, uh, as, as was already brought up, the feds did fund what I call the bookends, uh, actually Brazoria County and Jefferson County and Orange County. Now Jefferson and Brazoria County already have levies around their facilities there, but uh, th this is for improving in, uh, on the levies they already have. Orange County did not, and Orange County has been an issue. Uh, it was about a $4 billion deal they needed $200 million to, to match. And we were able to get that done in the legislature, selling our legislature from across the street on how, how important this is to the entire state. This is a huge economic engine for the entire state of Texas, not to mention for the nation. And that's why we talk about competition with other projects. I think we have a pretty good product to sell. And if we can just get through these studies, I think we have a good opportunity to go up there and sell this to Congress and get the whole thing done. But uh, like was mentioned, we got this $4 billion. If we didn't handle that right, I think the whole project would go down the tubes. Uh, so it was very important that we get that done. That was a high priority of mine during last session uh, beyond working with education and those types of things. But we were able to get the $200 million. Uh, in the meantime, our local sponsors at that point are the different drainage districts. Blasco over in Brazoria County, Jefferson and Orange County had their drainage districts. And Orange County is the one that was kind of a, has been a problem. They didn't feel like they had enough money to pay for their local park, uh, participate and get that done. Uh, since then, we've had a county judge changeover in Orange County and this new county judge is more, much more optimistic, much more positive. Uh, and in fact, we're, we've got them very close to, to sign the, the partnership agreement with the feds. Uh, as of last week, we were working to get a letter to confirm for the local drainage district there that, that they can use the state funds we've already uh, appropriated for some of those local costs. So I think that's gonna help them get that signed up. We've gotten that done by the Legislative Budget Board to sent them a letter, and that letter has also gone through the uh, General Land Office. So they have everything they need to show them that we have the backing to get their local portion done. So I think that's gonna be, get, be happening and we'll get that done, which does set us up for next session. Uh, now, Mayor, I would, would ha hope that we get that study done a little bit quicker because you know, our session ends in May. Uh, so it'd be nice to have something there that we can lean on uh, 
uh, earlier in session. Of course, we're looking at other options as well. All these drainage districts have taxing authority, uh, if, if that's an option. We have a number of options. We're looking at a local sponsor. We've got two different bills drafted right now, looking at multiple different ways, but that still hasn't been settled as to who the overall local sponsor would be. Uh, you know, you could have a commission of all the drainage districts come together. They have members that are represented on that commission. Uh, but I, I, I feel comfortable we'll get that done. We, we've, we've had to handle one step at a time <clears throat> and this getting this next part of the study done is very important to moving through to the process of getting started on construction. The construction is gonna take a long time. Uh, I think it's important for people to know when we talk about the local share, that 35%, that's paid out like over 30 years. So there's great opportunity to be able to do that. The maintenance obviously is gonna have to be done at, at the local level. But I will say uh, in New Orleans case, you know, if you go through the typical and, and Lynn knows this better than any of the rest of us, the normal Army Corps process, you know, this project could take 20, 30 or 100 years. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> we don't want to go that way, excuse me. <clears throat> we want to get this done, get our studies and then go to Congress and get a direct appropriation from Congress to get this done like they did in New Orleans. This is too important to wait 20 years for the potential of a massive hurricane coming through and wiping this, this infrastructure out. And y'all know the importance of, and particularly in today's world, it's a very mobile world. Things happen here, if it's, if it's that bad, it's not necessarily they'll actually come back here. They can just set up somewhere else. And so it's important that we protect our economy as well as the US economy, as well as national security because the aviation, military aviation fuels that are produced in this area, this is a very important project. And I'm doing everything I can along with the folks you see on this call. We've been working nonstop on this for now about 12 years. Uh, it's just been a slow, painful process, but we are making progress. And I think getting this report done gives us the opportunity to go to Congress and start really putting the sales uh, pitch on this thing and getting it done. And we've gotten a lot of support. The American Chemistry Council, which used to be the American Chemical Association, is on board. Uh, you know, a lot of the people that are supply here and the people who receive our products from here are on board. They, we want to go work with their congressmen and helping us get some buy-in from all across the country to get this project done. So it's not just Texas delegation working on this on their own. We're going to have help from other parts of the country who realize how important this is. So I appreciate the opportunity to give you the update. Uh, like I said, we've had a little bit of good news here lately, uh, but I'm ready for some really big good news. Well, thank you. Uh, so, what can Baytran do? Uh, what what role can we play in helping to advance it? How can we uh, best support you? Well, I think just like what we're doing here, I think keeping the public involved in this process and keeping them informed and let you know we can't let this go cold. Uh, this is too important of a project. Everybody will re be reminded of it. We have another hurricane, but we can't afford to sit around and wait for a hurricane to keep moving on this project. Uh, the timeline that's already been laid out with the studies coming out, the, the first report in October, having a good public input during that 45-day public comment period, I think is very important to reinforce and impress upon people that this is a, a big project that we all have buy-in on, that we agree on, and then moving forward to the next, next step, getting the, the final report uh, next spring. At that point, we need to gear up, and we'll probably need to make some trips to D.C., and I'm sure Baytran can help with us. I know Bayhep has helped on that, uh, but we need to take a, a large local contingent up there to go up and help sell this project. Well, thank you. Carl, do you have any closing remarks? Well, again, uh, I think we've all been involved in this uh, for years now, and uh, I like the idea that we're searching other ways to finance this possibly and uh, I guess I didn't remember that uh, pay payout was over 30 some years which we may not be around to see that finalized but uh, this is probably again one of the most important projects that Bay Van is involved in and uh, I truly appreciate all you guys working on this and uh, and we will be there with you in Washington and wherever we can uh, to make this go through because uh, it, uh, we've all been talking about a long time and it's, it's time to actually see something start happening. And like you said, construction is gonna take a long time, but uh, we've been a long time getting here and 
now we need to start the long time to get it constructed. So thank you all for being here today. And uh, again, I think this is one of the most uh, uh, participants that we've had for our uh, webinar. So guys, thank you for drawing a good crowd today and uh, let's stay on top of this. Colin, and, if I could? Yeah. Yes, of course. Just real quick, you remind me of something very important. Yeah, this project takes a long time. It's a long term, but this project is gonna last a very long time. You look at the seawall in Galveston, it was built after the 1900 storm. Those people had the foresight to do that. We are still enjoying the benefits of that today. I want people generations from, from today to, to be able to realize the benefits of what we've been doing this time. This is such an important project, probably one of the most important projects we can leave for future generations. Yeah, I agree. Okay, well, thank you all again, Mayor, Colonel, Senator, and a special thanks to our sponsor for today, SWCA. And uh, we also wanna recognize our newest members, the City of Dickinson and PRD Resources. So thank you all for your support and uh, look forward to hearing from everybody again as we get closer to that October uh, uh, public comment period, uh, we'll let you all know about it. So thanks again and everybody have a great day. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank Thanks. You.